we're kicking off today with SmackDown as tonight's show will see plenty of action during its two hours, and according to recent teases, should see the return of AJ Styles, who hasn't been seen in months. Visitors to WWE.com have been greeted with a pop-up notification encouraging them to tune into this week's episode, and the Phenomenal One is featured prominently in advertising. Styles has been conspicuous by his absence since the September 22nd episode when he was ambushed by the Bloodline during their feud with John Cena. Until he appears on TV though, it remains uncertain whether Styles will return tonight, but his situation has certainly ignited the curiosity of fans. Tonight's SmackDown will also see Charlotte Flair face Asuka, the return of CM Punk, and two US title tournament matches with Bobby Lashley vs Karrion Cross and Dragon Lee vs Santos Escobar. As for Styles, his return would certainly be a huge deal if it happens, and we'll certainly have to tune in to SmackDown tonight to know for sure. On March 1st, 2021, Bobby Lashley finally became a WWE World Champion, something that many fans feel should have happened during his first run, and had a second run with the gold in 2022. Now, it's been close to two years since Lashley held a world championship in WWE, and while speaking to Steve Fall of Wrestling News, the Almighty advocated for another run. He said, I'd like another world title run. I'm in great shape. I'll work my ass off. I'm building a team. I work with other people having good matches when I have an opportunity to have matches, but um, I think that I should and could have another good title run. Lashley's second run as champion ended at WWE Elimination Chamber 2022, and the Almighty would have been taken out of the match due to an injury and never actually pinned. Lashley never even received a rematch for the title, which is now part of the undisputed WWE Universal title held by Roman Reigns, so it's easy to see why Lashley wants another shot. But what do you make of this? Would you like to see another World Championship run for Bobby Lashley? Sound off in the comments below. When AEW parted ways with CM Punk, Brian Danielson was part of the committee that was advising Tony Khan, and this is one of several roles that the American Dragon has. In addition to being an on-screen talent, Danielson also works backstage, and now the former world champion will be laying down the law when it comes to social media. Speaking on Fightful's The Hump, Sean Ross Sapp explained that Danielson is now fining AEW talent based on their social media conduct, and that a handful of talent have already been fined. It wasn't stated what exactly will lead to an AEW wrestler getting a fine, only that Danielson is monitoring what talent say online and is prepared to dish out fines to offending parties. Brian Danielson is one of the most well-liked names in AEW, but that could change now that he's fining wrestlers, and we'll have to see if talent watch what they say from here on. It's been over two years since Andrade El Idolo debuted for AEW, but despite a high-impact arrival, many feel his run with the company has been somewhat lackluster. Andrade has held no championships in AEW and has rarely even had a chance to compete for gold, and now his time as an AEW star may be coming to an end. During Wrestling Observer Radio, it was explained that Andrade's contract will expire soon, and it is possible he'll leave in order to try and get back to WWE. Andrade would be a great prospect for WWE as he has a ton of talent, and returning to WWE would allow him more time to spend with his wife Charlotte Flair. Andrade did very well during his WWE NXT run when Triple H was in charge of the gold brand, and with the game now running creative on the main roster, this could be what leads Andrade to return. It's been rumored for some time that Andrade wants a WWE return, with reports last year that he was trying to get fired from AEW with a backstage fight with Sammy Guevara in order to go back. Whether Andrade becomes a WWE superstar or not, time will tell, but what do you think should happen next for him as his AEW deal continues to get closer to expiring? For some time now, somebody in a devil mask has been making life hell for MJF, with speculation running rampant as to who this mystery figure and his henchmen are. Adam Cole, Roderick Strong, and Jack Perry have all been named as potential devils, with MJF even accusing Hangman Adam Page on this week's episode of Dynamite. While we don't know who it is, we know that AEW knows who it is, as Fightful Select reports, it was reiterated to us that as of last week, the talent that are slated to play the Devils on AEW TV were still being portrayed by those under the mask. Some fans had speculated that the people we're seeing now won't be revealed, but are rather simply just playing the role for now, but that is far from being the case. 
As to who will be unmasked, that remains to be unseen, but right now, we are watching the talent who will be revealed appearing each week on AEW programming. On this week's AEW Dynamite, MJF was attacked backstage by the devil and his minions, and a glass bottle was smashed over his head, or at least that's what fans are being led to believe. The attack on MJF was never shown, but instead, all we saw was the knocked out champion next to a broken glass bottle, but what's wrong with this picture? On Twitter, a fan pointed out that there is no blood on MJF, which you'd expect if a bottle was smashed over his head, and suggested that there's no blood because MJF was never attacked. The fan stated that MJF is the devil and that this attack was trying to throw people off the scent, and could MJF be the one wreaking havoc on TV? Give your predictions below. Last time we saw Braun Strowman in the ring, it was in May of this year, and not long after, the monster among men went under the knife for neck fusion surgery. Strowman was recently cleared by his doctor to lift weights, and the bones in his neck are fusing nicely, and could we be seeing the former Universal Champion back next month? Speaking with News 18, Strowman was asked about his recovery, and while he hopes to be back for the Royal Rumble, it isn't his call to make. He said, You'll know when I'm back, just know that. I don't know yet. If I could be back in the Rumble, that'd be great. But like I said, I'm at the mercy of the doctors and what they say. I'm listening to them because this was a very serious injury that I had. So slow and steady as the process on the company is so supportive behind me and stuff. So it's an unbelievable blessing to be able to continue to work, do what I love, and get the output and reaction on people's faces. In the same interview, Strowman was asked about whether he'll be a single superstar upon his return or continue tagging with Ricochet, who recently returned from a concussion. He said, Anything. I love the opportunity to work, tag team stuff, and that's what my big thing is. I don't like people gang up on other people because I've dealt with that my whole career of having to fight multiple people at a time. So when I see somebody who's in distress and can use a hand, why not lend two of the biggest in the world out to them? So I had a lot of fun wrestling with Ricochet, seeing that we're completely two different human beings and we're somehow the same species. Strowman returned to WWE in September 2022, but this injury has been a major setback and we're wishing him the absolute best on his recovery. Tomorrow night NXT will host its deadline event, but due to a serious back injury, Wes Lee will not be a part of this show or any shows for the next 8 to 12 months. Lee emotionally explained the situation on this week's NXT, which comes as a massive blow to the young superstar, and pulling him was an unfortunate decision for NXT head Shawn Michaels. Speaking on the NXT Deadline media call, Michaels was asked about Lee and said that the decision to remove him from the show was made at the last minute. WWE and Lee were holding out hope that he'd still be able to compete at Deadline, but added that Wes has been struggling for some time and needs to take the time off. The decision for Dragon Lee to replace Wes was made in less than 24 hours before NXT. The Heartbreak Kid is pleased to have Dragon Lee back in NXT, despite the unfortunate circumstances. As for Wes Lee, we can only send the popular superstar the very best, as one of NXT's brightest stars won't be competing for a very long time to come. Since Survivor Series, fans have been clamoring to see more of CM Punk in WWE, and while he'll be at tonight's SmackDown, could Punk also be appearing for NXT? During the Deadline media call, Shawn Michaels was asked about Punk and said how Triple H made his return happen before joking that Punk should return the favor and appear for NXT. CM Punk wasn't the only notable name Michaels was asked about, as he also spoke about Becky Lynch's recent NXT run and had high praise for the man. Michaels said that Lynch had a genuine desire to elevate the NXT women's division as a whole, and appreciated Lynch doing just that with humility, professionalism, and class. Sean also pointed out that Lynch had a positive impact on NXT's ratings as well as creatively, and that she made the time for everyone in NXT, earning her plenty of respect. When asked about Mackenzie Mitchell, Michaels said he had no insight or input into the decision to let her go, adding that Mitchell will always be a part of the NXT family. A release came as a surprise to the showstopper, and while Sean said that there are overlapping roles and changes happening, he mentioned that the door remains open with WWE. He recognized her departure as a loss to NXT and expressed that they will miss her greatly, but stressed the need for the machine to keep rolling. Ultimately, WWE NXT will keep rolling no matter what, and now Michael's focus is putting on an excellent show this Saturday at Deadline in Bridgeport, Connecticut.
Since joining AEW in 2019, John Moxley has been one of the most active bleeders in the company, with his use of the red viscous liquid becoming a joke among fans. According to some, Moxley can hardly go through a match without deciding to blade, but the former WWE and AEW World Champion had some strong words about his bleeding. Sitting down with Chris Mueller of Bleacher Report, Moxley was asked about his bleeding and made it clear that it is his personal form of expression. He explained, As far as like my own shit, I just do whatever the fuck I want at the moment. If I stop doing it and do a fucking spin a in the middle of the match and take a wrench and gouge my fucking head open, it's because I felt like fucking doing it. You can't tell me what I did was wrong. I didn't agree not to. It's just a form of self-expression. It's what I felt like doing. It's what wrestling is to me. Whatever I'm going to do, it's whatever I'm going to do in the moment. I don't know what that is. It could be anything. John Moxley is currently one of the leaders of the AEW Continental Classic with 9 points, but will face Swerve Strickland, who also has 9 points, on next week's episode of Dynamite. We wouldn't be surprised if Moxley blades against Strickland, and what do you make of his use of blading and his comments? Let us know down in our comments. For years, Deanna Perrazzo has been one of the leading knockouts for Impact Wrestling and has held the company's Knockouts Championship on multiple occasions. In a matter of weeks, Impact will undergo a major change and go by TNA Wrestling again, but it remains to be seen if Perrazzo will be along for the ride. Fightful Select reports that Perrazzo is gearing up to explore her options as a free agent, and as of now, no new agreement has been reached between herself and Impact. Perrazzo has made her mark in various promotions, including WWE, ROH, AEW, AAA, and Stardom, so if she leaves Impact, she'll probably not have trouble finding work. Some fans have speculated that Perrazzo might stick with Impact Wrestling, especially after she was featured in TNA Wrestling Graphics, but her schedule would imply that she is leaving. Perrazzo's final scheduled dates are for Impact's final resolution tapings in Canada this weekend, and the report adds that she and Impact are on good terms. Should the Virtuosa leave, it appears that the door will be left wide open for a potential return, but for now, expect Perrazzo to try her hand as a free agent in wrestling very soon. Now, it was in October 2014 that Gabby Tuft last competed in the ring, but now the former WWE superstar is open to a return to the ring. Speaking during an interview with TV Insider, Tuft was asked about wrestling again and was open to the possibility, saying, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I did put my foot back in the ring for the first time in 11 years recently. I went down to the Rhodes Wrestling Academy under Dustin Rhodes, Gold Dust. I texted him and said that I would love to come down and stick my foot in the ring. He said to come down. It was an incredible feeling to be back in the ring. Since I did that, there's been a huge resurgence and feeling for what I love. I had open heart surgery in July 2019. I said to my doctor, hey, review my scans. Am I clear to wrestle if I want? I'm hoping to hear back this week to see if I'm 100% clear. If that's the case, very shortly, I may resume training. While Tuft hasn't competed since 2014, the ex-superstar has been active and currently works as a fitness model and coach. As to whether we'll see Tuft back in the ring, that remains to be seen, but in an era where several wrestlers from the past have made returns, a comeback for Tuft remains a possibility. For years, Mike Santana was a regular on AEW TV thanks to his role in the Inner Circle, but those days are a distant memory for the veteran wrestler. Santana's last match on TV was a no-disqualification win on the October 25th Rampage over his former ally Ortiz, but since then, Santana has been absent from programming. Taking to Twitter, Santana pointed out that he hasn't been booked on AEW programming in six weeks, but must have thought better as he quickly deleted the tweet. Despite deleting this post, Santana's comment caused quite the stir, and we expect Brian Danielson will have a thing or two to say to Santana about his recent use of social media. Last week, Mackenzie Mitchell announced that she'd been released from WWE, with her departure coming as a surprise to many within the company. Mitchell was said to be well-liked, easy to get on with, and a professional throughout her WWE run, but now the company has found her replacement. On WWE.com, the promotion shared that Kelly Kincaid is set to take on much of Mitchell's responsibilities, and said that if you need a hard-hitting question asked, go to Kincaid. This addition to WWE's roster promises an exciting new era with Kelly Kincaid's talents at the forefront of the company's entertainment lineup, and we'll have to see how she does in her new role. 
If you've been online for long enough, you've probably encountered a fake profile claiming to be a famous wrestler who is messaging to ask for some money or maybe gift cards. These fakes are often easy to spot, as it'd be odd for a multi-millionaire like John Cena to need $50 for gas money, but this week, one married man got catfished in the worst way. In a viral TikTok video, a man and his wife are asked to swap phones, and things started off bad when the man got wrong about how long he and his partner have been together. When the wife went through the man's Snapchat messages, he found a series of flirty messages with an account claiming to be Liv Morgan, but it wasn't the actual WWE superstar. On Twitter, Morgan, the real one that is, responded to the video, and it was clear that she wasn't thrilled by the fake profile of her or the man's flirty messages to her imposter. Wrestlers, especially female wrestlers, are often the subject of imposters, and if the idea of a popular WWE superstar messaging you out of the blue seems too good to be true, odds are it probably is. For decades, Vince McMahon was the unquestionable head of WWE, and whatever he said went, though that is no longer the case. With Endeavor now owning WWE, they are willing to look past some of McMahon's rules, including one that Vince took so seriously it was seen as his religion. On Wrestling Observer Radio, it was explained that the rule in question is about advertising on the ring mat, something McMahon was vehemently against during his time in charge. It was stated that keeping the mat free from advertisements was like a religion to McMahon, but that rule is no longer the case. Ultimately, Endeavor will do what they feel is best from a business sense, and that includes advertising where they feel is right, in another sign of who really is in charge of WWE today. Next week, AEW will host its Winter is Coming show in Arlington, Texas, so it's fitting that one of the greatest wrestling families native to Texas appear on Dynamite. It's been confirmed that the Von Erichs will be at next week's Dynamite and will be represented by Kevin Von Erich and his sons, Marshall and Russ. Kevin retired from wrestling in 1995, but came out of retirement for one more match in 2017 alongside his sons, who have been a tag team for over 11 years in various companies. It's great to see AEW recognize the legacy of the Von Herricks, and we're sure the family will have a great time back at a wrestling event in their beloved Texas. And we're ending with Ric Flair, who during a recent taping of AEW Rampage, made a comment during a promo in which he wanted all women aged 18 to 28 to join him in his hotel room. Many took issue with the line, especially given Flair's alleged actions on the plane ride from hell, in which the Nature Boy allegedly forced a distressed female flight attendant to touch his genitals. This line ultimately didn't make it to the broadcast, and in an update from Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select, AEW were aware pretty much instantly that they were going to have to cut the line. While the line wasn't broadcast, it still stirred up controversy, so much so that Flair has said he'll leave AEW if he feels that he is an embarrassment to Tony Khan or his company. Flair was going to join AEW in 2021, before Dark Side of the Rings plane ride from hell episode and the backlash nixed those plans, and Flair is still finding himself in hot water.